Sheffield Live TV of a Thursday evening. Welcome back. We're on part two. Naturally, we're talking about the Sheffield Derby, Hillsborough on Sunday. And we thought we'd uh, put together well-known supporters of each club. Hence, we have uh, World Snooker uh, referee Brendan Moore. And we have the MP Toby Perkins, MP for Chesterfield. So he kind of wears two football hats, uh, James. Uh, you know, you'll lose votes if you if you if you don't support the spy rights as well. Oh, very I much do. so. And, and I mean, at the moment they're going through a terrible time, and uh, there's genuine concern about the future. You know, once you get down to the League Two, you know, can't afford a bad season, and just lost the manager. So, yeah, it's uh, Sheffield United's uh, maybe a bit of pleasure, and that's uh, Chesterfield's business. And uh, you know, got a good relationship with the club, but you know, a lot of concern about the club. Yeah, and the choice of manager has to be right. I think they've Definitely. been putting a short list together today, or the start of a short list, and we'll see where that goes. James is uh, with us as well. Slightly tipping the sofa, the balance. We had a perfect balance here before you, you arrived, You hate mate. that, don't you? You really no, the hate that. The balance has to be just right. We've got an owl over there. I've got a blue and white stripy shirt on, though, if that helps. Does that count? Well, we all not know that, just, don't not we? Not when we've we just all seen know. your phone cover, it doesn't matter. <laughs> 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 I'm keeping that in my pocket. <laughs> we know your favours. And yeah, we were we talking do. during the break about uh, Toby's... I mean, I keep politics out of this show, but this transcends politics like the football does. Um, your campaign to adopt Land of Hope and Glory as a, as a national anthem, it certainly works very well in sport. How's that going? Well, I mean, it was the, the campaign itself was for there to be an English national anthem that recognised when England played, uh, we would have an English anthem, and when we came together as Britain, as we do in the Davis Cup, the Olympics, that we'd stick with God Save the Queen. You know, Scotland and Wales have got their own individual national anthems, yeah. uh, and I think England should do the same. I haven't actually been prescriptive about whether it be Jerusalem, there'll always be in England, Land of Hope and Glory, whatever it might be. Yeah. Um, I, I fancy the idea of having some kind of TV uh, voting thing where we get all these different songs played and, and all the public vote but um, there was a lot of support yeah. for the idea but as I say the, the government basically said well it's up to the individual um, sporting bodies the FA the RFU the English Cricket Board and so on uh, and those individual bodies say well it's a bit uh, of a political hot potato for us with you know if the government directs us we'll do it but you know otherwise we'll keep out of it so yeah. so it's never really gone anywhere I mean I think uh, you know, we had the England-Wales game in, in the Euros this year. You know, you've got Wales sing their national anthem, and then England stand there and sing the British one. And it seems, you know, in this era of devolution, that uh, it would be a good idea for England to have its own national I'd, anthem. I'd vote Land of Home Glory. What about you, Brendan? <laughs> Um, what, what, what are you voting for? Jerusalem, Jerusalem yeah. I think, yeah. Jerusalem. Because yeah. they yeah. play that at the start of the cricket, yeah. don't they? And you get Laura Wright to sing it. And that's like hair on the back of your neck sort of stuff, isn't it? It's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Really good. I couldn't disagree, really. I wouldn't complain I either, either to be fair. You, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go on, you're going to say hi-ho Sheffield Wednesday. Yeah. Yeah. No, say. no. Or yeah, you're right then. Greasy <laughs> Chirpati song. Yeah, we'll have that. Yeah, that's a proper tune. <laughs> it's going to be great on Sunday. Um, I was going to mention as well, just before James's roundup. you know, we talked in the first half about... Uh, the banter that sometimes goes a bit beyond banter at uh, football and we're, we're all conditioned and used to it now on, on social media but uh, although we're not going to we don't take sides politically or talk about politics other than that what you noticed during the last election I thought that the spite and malice that was going on on social media during the election put football in the shade yeah and well, did you it think was, that? It was a, yeah, it was a really rough ride I have to say I mean I think that you know, coming off the back of the, the Brexit referendum, uh, they saw the same in Scotland after the Scottish referendum. I think these kind of very divisive um, issues uh, really do sort of put people at each other's throats. And, uh, it, you know, it was a real, as I say, a really rough ride during the election. You were getting a lot of abuse. There's been um, lots of MPs that were targeted, lots of vandalism. Um, there was, you know, I think particularly some of the female colleagues uh, terrible rape threats and so on. There's lots of people ended up going to jail for things that they're saying online. And I think uh, it is, you know, the, the dark side of the uh, social media mm -hmm. is the sort of extent to which it just makes it so easy for you to just send off, uh, you know, hateful comments. And sometimes I'll look at what people have said to me and you go onto their profile and all it seemed to use social media for is just to sit there sending you know nasty things to one person after another mm. and, and you think well the keyboard you know, warriors surely yeah, how, social how media was meant yeah. to bring us together not, yeah, uh, not sort apart. of push us apart how, how do you cope with it uh, you must get plenty so. well you, i mean you get very sanguine about it i have to say when i first went on twitter 
you know, you sort of want to be liked by everyone. And I think after a bit, you realise you know, it's not <laughs> like that. No. And, uh, <laughs> and, and you know, nowadays, it's water off a duck's back, really. Yeah, uh, I would I agree with that. people are, are, are offensive, yeah. you know, I might block them. Um, if, if I think they're becoming so obsessed with targeting me, this... Uh, Someone who you know well, former BBC Radio Sheffield uh, Chesterfield correspondent uh, Jeff Mitchell, who, who pursued, uh, no, not offensive, but pursues me relentlessly on Twitter. So I, I, I sort of no longer uh, engage with it because I just think it's not healthy. Give, give them their lives back and uh, yes, uh, you're doing them a favour. Get on with it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but uh, I, you know, yeah. I, I, it doesn't uh, it doesn't personally bother me. No. Although it, it is, um, you know, I think a lot of my friends say, God, I, I saw what someone said to you, you know, I'd have smacked them if I'd have known who it was, you know, and, uh, but you, you do, you just get used you to it. You can't afford to do that, that's for a start. No, that's a start not, yeah. no. <laughs> what about you, Brendan? Um, do, do you cop for some of this? I mean, you, I mean you ba basically, it's a sedate game, snooker, you, you, you know, you're not biased one way or the other, you've got respected players, surely nothing can go wrong, can it? Um, a few times, yeah. a few Go on, times, man. but it's not snooker related. It's it's, it's football again. Is it? Yeah. Um, How can it's, well because this is what infuriates me about football in general is we've all got mates who support Wednesday, who support United. One of mine happens to play for Sheffield United, so I get quite a bit of stick from that in a jokey way, which is great. Yeah. But then when you get the odd Wednesday fan that starts having a real dig, yeah, I'm sorry, but you must have mates that. Support United. This we're all up in the same city. Yeah, we're all, yeah, yeah, exactly. Correct, yeah. I just happen to be mates who wonder place for this United. This is W Sharp Esquire. <sighs> he happens to captain them, yeah. William yeah. Sharp. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. A yeah. friend of this show, he's been in here twice. And yeah, so I know him, him and um, I got um, one of his, the United shirts signed for my goddaughter. Right. Because he's her favourite player. So I'm holding the shirt while he's signing it. Someone took a picture, put it on Twitter, and I get abuse from it. Yeah. Is yeah, it? yeah, yeah. I mean, and that's the part that I can't handle. I mean, my goddaughter's favourite player wants a shirt signed. I know the guy, can you sign it? And then I get abuse for it. Yeah. So I, d I don't like that side of it. No. But like no. you say, water off a duck's back, you've got to ignore Correct. it. Yeah, so. I suppose so. And you must be used to high intensity, high pressure moments. Although I noticed, you know, I, I researched you and you were quoted as saying in one article, you never feel nervous. So no, I don't, because yeah. not in snooker, no, because as far as I'm yeah. concerned, nobody's there to watch me. No. Nobody's there to watch the ref, and the ref only becomes noticeable if you make a mistake. Yeah. So as far well, as there's I'm a concerned, contentious issue that you've yeah. got to resolve. Yeah. So as far as I'm concerned, I don't get nervous. The first time I walked out in Sheffield, I was nervous that I wasn't nervous. I'm like everyone talks about the butterflies and what it's like in Sheffield, yeah. and I'm yeah. not feeling it, and I didn't right. know why. Yeah. But like I say, no one's there to watch me. All right. Well, we mentioned Billy Sharp. We'll talk about Billy Sharp again in a minute because the question everybody wants to know. You may even be able to answer it. I don't know, <laughs> I, whether, I, I don't know if you spoke to him in the last couple of days, whether he's going to be fit for the derby or not. And you and I, I sort of know. had a few... Oh, you don't, I know, don't know. Right. What I a disappointment. That's a shame. We Sorry should have left that. that lingering. Sorry about that. <laughs> but we'll talk, well, Toby's got a theory on it as well. Uh, and we'll, we'll ask him about that because it, it really could go quite a long way to deciding how this that, that goes. James, uh, lots going on. Of course, yeah. Well, I think yeah. everything that is um, going to be said and uh, has been said and whatever, everything is sort of geared up towards Sunday, isn't it? I think that's already yeah. been covered. So I won't try and do that. But what yeah. I will say is it's, you, won't know, you won't remember. Certainly, I won't remember because I wasn't alive. Um, in 51 years ago to the day, uh, since the clubs shared four goals at Hillsborough, um, it was the September the 24th, 1966, the Owls and the Blades went head-to-head -head in front of 43,000 yeah, yeah. fans. Um, and they finished two all. So to be fair, I think that if two all, would you take two all? No, no, no. <laughs> okay. No. No. Toby. No, it's a, I don't know. That was the home team. If this was at Bramall Lane, uh, I'd take the draw. I think. Yeah. Uh, we're, yeah that's we're at true. home. Okay. Fair point. Yeah. Two all. I'd take two all. I'd probably take it. Probably take it. Okay. But I think we'll win. <laughs> All right, okay. I'm, I'm going 1 1, so I'm not really helping anything. No, I'm you're going for a, I'm on my phone. What, a, what a surprise. Uh, what know, a know, surprise. <laughs> but there's so much more to be said on that in the coming 20 minutes or so, so I'll leave it to these chaps <laughs> for yeah. that. Um, Hallam FC, they're unbeaten in their last four, drawing away at Swollen Est um, at the weekend. Another stern test this weekend. They play against Rossington, Maine, who are unbeaten in their last six. Uh, that's away from home on Saturday. Whilst the world's oldest football club, yes, sometimes we'd have to remind ourselves 
in Sheffield we do um, have that in our home uh, back off three straight defeats they're playing against base for the United at the coach and horses ground on Saturday um, in ice hockey, better news for the Steelers. That's their fourth win in five games. Uh, they beat Dundee Stars 8-2 at the weekend. It's at the top of the English Ice Hockey League. Yet plenty of games left yet, I know. Um, but Sunday, 5 p.m. against Belfast Giants is your next chance to see them. So if you do, um, if your team has lost um, on Sunday, whether you're an owl or a blade, why don't get down to the arena and see if the Steelers can reignite, um, this, you know, a bit of passion, uh, maybe restore your faith in the uh, sporting team that you support in this city. Uh, Sheffield Eagles, they lost to Batley away on Sunday. They'll have a chance to win um, when it matters this coming Sunday in the semi-finals of the Super 8. Um, and in basketball, the DBL Shark Sheffield coach, um, Atiba Lyons, he's going to be coming in here soon, is he? Is that right? I hope so, yeah, I hope Hopefully so. so. He's very pleased well, because if you remember yeah. at the start of last season, um, they had a load of players sort of leave before the season had already started. So they had to scramble around, try and get some players in from um, different countries, etc. So that was not the best of starts for them, but they've made five new signings and they started with a comfortable 111-81 um, to 81 point win over Manchester Giants in a pre-season friendly last mm. week. Uh, yeah, so, so different to last year when they had to scramble around for players. Um, and also finish off with a friend of the show and a bit of a Sheffield legend, actually. We're talking in the break and we're just saying that he doesn't probably get the recognition that he deserves. Um, and that's Nick Matthew. And he set his sights on ending his playing career on a high. He's going to retire at the end of this season. Um, he's been wrestling with the decision for the best part of 18 months, he says. So he's definitely been in here in that time. He certainly has. Um, and he always talks about it. And he's, he's done so well. The longevity of his 20-year career. He's won the, the World Championships three times, three Commonwealth gold medals and three British Open titles. And that will be his last event uh, this season. So it'll be next year, about March time, the British Open. So plenty of chances to see Nick in action yet. But we do wish Nick all the best for his last season we as do. a professional squash player. We do. And many congratulations on a, on a great career. I just yeah. think it, it's the sport, isn't it? It is, yeah. You know, Nick couldn't have done any more in the sport. The sport think, needs I, to be projected. I think that's one of the things is. that he will be doing when he retires. It's trying to promote squash. So. And he's setting up his academy and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So get him in here, promote it <laughs> hey, hey, with us too. Of course, we'll really do a good job of that. He's always and, welcome. Uh, yeah. He's always welcome. Of and of course, he's an owl as well. So, you know, we have good to be to careful that. with the balances. You yes, do, but, we do, yeah. Uh, but uh, balance. Nick, Nick, <laughs> Nick is going to be a, an outstanding sports commentator, I believe, and not just on, on squash. On squash, yeah. I can see the potential for him to be go quite a long way in the, in, in the media. Absolutely. For the media. Uh, career. Um, where were we? Yeah, Billy, Billy, thanks James, Billy Sorry. Sharp. Um, it's all quiet. Um, logically, there was no way he was going to be rested against uh, Norwich last weekend, eight days before a derby. He was going to play if he was fit, so he was genuinely injured. All quiet. Have you any thoughts or theories well, as to whether I mean, he'll play I, on Sunday? You know, obviously, I'm, I'm hope. I know uh, that um, if Billy's if any chance Billy can play, then he will do his, you know, talismanic figure for for us. Not just the goals, um, but the goals are absolutely crucial. But but also the leadership. I think, you know, if you were going into a Sheffield derby, what better than having a captain who who supports them alongside a manager who supports your club? So you know, if there's any way Billy can play, I'm sure he will. I have a feeling that uh, come come uh, with one fifteen or whatever time it is on yeah. uh, on Sunday, Billy will be there. But, I think it's uh, one thirty. Uh, is it one thirty? Yeah, yeah. My, my, uh, uh, if I had to bet on it, I bet that uh, Billy will come through. But you know, none of us have got any idea, and it is a real worry that you know, alongside um, Billy being injured, we've got uh, Leon Clark out, Lavery and Hansen are out long term. Yeah. Obviously, Clayton Donaldson come, came in, fantastic debut. Now he's been out. Yeah. Um, so to have five players all in the same position uh, injured is is very cruel. Look, and a sixth really with Chad Evans, who's, who's obviously not fit. Um, you know, which is undermining his, his return. So uh, it's, it's a real problem to have all those players uh, in the same position that uh, are injured. But hopefully um, Billy will be fit on, on Sunday and do mm. the business. My instinct tells me the same, that I think he'll mm. play. I think that Billy will play, but I don't blame Chris Wilder for putting a blank on it because you want to keep the opponents guessing. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, yeah. And I'm sure Wednesday fans like you will be very interested as to whether Billy Sharp's playing or not. Uh, your pal, your pal. Well, to be honest, just I mean, that. Yeah, well, whoever the 11 is, I'm still I'm confident. Yeah. I mean, obviously it'd be a loss to them, yeah. without a doubt. Um, but 
whether he plays or not, I, I, I strongly think that we'll win anyway. So. Is there a player that, that you, because I've got a theory about who's going to really shine in this game. Do you, have you, are you worried about a particular United player? Anybody? No, not really. But that's not being disrespectful. I don't watch them. No. So I don't know. I mean, yeah. we were talking earlier. I mean, um, Coots, is it? Yeah. Um, I, I generally don't know what he's like. And we, we were talking earlier and he's instrumental to them. Paul Coots, yeah. Yeah, but uh, then you look at our midfield. I mean, Kieran Lee's tremendous. He's been For me, he's one of, if not the best yeah. midfielder in that division. Um, so it's going to be an int a good midfield battle. On Sunday, yeah. Is there a, is there a, a Wednesday player that you, that you? Well, you I mean, you know, I think with respect Wednesday. I think they've, they'll pose a threat from corners, particularly. Um, but I think that you know, a lot of um, teams. One of the great strengths United have got is, is teams are coming up against us, thinking, well, there's no stars there. I mean, but people do know Billy Sharp because of his goals down the years. But you know, it's shown we've we've gone out there with a club like Derby County, very similar to Wednesday. Money they've spent, expectation mm. there. You know, and we um, we took them to the cleaners really. You know, then we go up to Sunderland, all the money that they've got coming down from the Premiership, one to one, but really could have beaten them a lot uh, a lot more easily. So I think it, you know teams are, um, are disrespecting United at their peril this season, and uh, yeah. uh, we'll see what happens uh, on Sunday. But I've been to Hillsborough and when United are unfancied, and Wednesday have got all the stars and all splashing the money out of their piggy banks, <laughs> and United are there with our. Uh, few quid being spent and uh, we've got a result so uh, you know pride comes before a fall. Brendan I think you need to reply. <laughs> no, I no, think this is what, what a party political broadcast is after this <laughs> uh, you know broadcast on behalf of the uh, Sheffield United party. One in a red shirt, one in a blue shirt, yeah. fantastic I'm enjoying it. No, I'm, I mean I'm quite I'm more than quietly confident so yeah, yeah. Let, let, me just, let me play the little brother card. Let me throw you let me throw you David Brooks because this is a this is a player that strikes me has not only got the talent but he's got the temperament to really shine in a game like this you know I don't see him being a bag of nerves I see him taking to that stage yeah. and this a huge stage for him with all those injuries what do you think well I mean it would be a huge decision to play him I, I would suspect he'll start on the bench um, but uh, you know who, who knows um, you know Chris might, Chris might just uh, yeah. You know, send him in there. But I agree. I mean, I think he's he's going to be a real top talent. You know, I think just the the minute he's one of those players that the minute they get the ball, um, they're already thinking about what they're going to do next. It never looks like controlling the ball is an effort to him. Uh, uh, he's uh, you know, you saw just uh, first few minutes of his full debut against Norwich. He, you know, stick it, stuck it through a Almost defender's scored, legs, it? and you know, great save that denied him. So I yeah. think he's going to be a, a top, top talent. And we've, you know, uh, unlike our, our friends across the city, we've got a pedigree of bringing these top players through: Jagielka, <laughs> Carl Walker, uh, and uh, you know, many others. Calvert Lewin now, you know, was uh, another one. Uh, and I think Brooks is going to be another one from the stable. You'd never know he was a politician, would you? No, I know. I know. He's, he makes his point. He's no, but I actually agree with him, though. I mean, yeah. we, we were yeah. the same with uh, George Hurst at the moment. Yes. We'd love to see him on the bench, give him a game, same as this Brooks kid. Why not get him, in, get him out there? Absolutely. Yeah. Let, Everton, good... let Everton know what they're going to buy. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> Correct. <laughs> the thing is with it as well, you know, from, from seeing these players, is the fact that I think you, the Blades, you know, Brooks and Hurst are probably... At a very similar kind of level. Maybe Hurst, actually, I would have said that in the youth football, in development league football, he looks like he's slightly ahead in, in Brooks in that sense. But the right. fact that the Blades have had to throw Brooks in almost, being, I mean, certainly at the weekend, they were forced to throw Brooks in there, it probably, it's, it's probably helped him that. Whereas a day. Hurst you know, needs a, that. The George it? Hurst, he, at, needs, he needs a break and yeah. he needs three or four strikers to be injured and you know you have a get you know not an easy game but you know a team against the lower down on a Tuesday night chuck him in that's where you need to but see him isn't it at the moment and fortunately moment, for Wednesday their senior strikers are doing it and scoring correct and I, I, I mean that's good for the team yeah, but, yeah. But they're, they're key to Sunday like you say with the aerial threat I mean the way Fletcher Absolutely. and Hooper are playing at the moment I mean yeah. they are causing havoc at the moment and they've done it you know Hooper's yeah. done it in the old firm derby Fletcher's done it in True. the in the northeast derby. You know, they're, yes. they, they're used to that atmosphere. Absolutely, yeah. and, and it's know, also but people like Wallace and that they played yeah. in the Glasgow derby, and he's played up in the northeast derby and stuff. So you've yeah. got players yeah. that have played in this environment. Um, I think there's more pressure on Wednesday because of the the money that's spent, the, the reputation home team. of the players and at home. Yeah. But the the interesting dynamic for me about this is normally 
you look and think, I wonder how the away team will set up. You know, will they go and try and frustrate or will they have a go? With United, there's, there's only one way they're, they're geared to play. And I'm absolutely convinced they're just going to go for it. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure they will. You know, we went to Middlesbrough and uh, first 20 minutes at Middlesbrough were a better side on the front foot. Um, even at Cardiff where we, we got done over a bit. But we're always looking to get forward. Um, so, no, I think uh, it will be uh, an attacking game. I think, you know, there is a slight worry that we haven't scored more goals than we have. We've, you know, got eight goals in eight games. When you look at the amount of possession and the quality of chances that we created, particularly against Barnsley, but also, yeah. um, also against Derby and then Norwich, you know, we probably should have more goals than we have. Um, so that, that's all the more reason why, you know, Sharp and Donaldson getting fit uh, is crucial. Um, but no, I think we'll go there and, and we'll be positive. And uh, uh, actually, you know, the more that we have the ball, um, you know, I think the more pressure it starts to put on Wednesday. But there's a school of thought, and I don't know if Brendan agrees, that this is exactly the way Wednesday want the I, opposition yeah, to play. Absolutely. We've had it with uh, like Newcastle last season. They come to us with the way they play, all out attack. And the way Wednesday can play, even though we're home, but soak it up, hit them on the break. But I agree with the attacking game. It'll be an attacking game. But if United come out the way, which I think they will, because we're at the, what, three at the back and he never changes yeah, it. It's the yeah, way they play all the time. Playing with yeah, backs, yeah. yeah. They, they never seem to change it. So yeah. I personally think it will suit Wednesday to the ground if they come out and, and go for it from the start. Do you? Even though uh, a restlessness has built up at Hillsborough in games where Wednesday haven't made that kind of positive start in games, and they genuinely had to concentrate on doing it more often this season yeah, to get have. the crowd on side. No, no, I agree with that. But, I mean, this game, both set of fans, the players will be up for it no matter what happens in the first 10 minutes. So I can't see either set of fans getting on the team's back, certainly in the early doors anyway. They'll give them time yeah. to settle down. What, did you see it being a, a, an exciting game, an open game, or yeah. a very tight game? No, I see it being end-to-end. -end. I think there'll be several goals in it. Yeah, I think the way United play will dictate that. We'll, yeah. we'll go for that sort of game. And they've not been classics over the years, but I tend to agree with you guys. I think it's going to be one of the more entertaining uh, Sheffield derbies mm. that we've yeah, seen. Yeah, I, sus I suspect so. I, think, yeah. I mean, just in terms of the fans, I think it's a real disappointment that... Uh, the, the ticket allocation to United was as small as it was. I mean, I think United will do the same at Bramall Lane, and it's a huge mistake. I think they, you know, both um, Hillsborough and Bramall Lane are set up for having both end, you know, having a full end of, of away fans. I think it makes for a better atmosphere. Yeah. Uh, I think it's a, a real sort of retrograde step. It's to, a safety you know, committee yeah, to, to is, well, yeah. you, the, you know, the, the, the Leppings Lane end is there. You've got, you know, you've got fans above, fans below. Mm. I don't think there's a safety issue with that. Uh, I think it's to do, you know, understand Wednesday, want to get as many of their fans in as possible, and United will reciprocate. But I just think it's a mistake. I think in terms of the, you know, the atmosphere of the occasion, you know, five or six thousand away fans there, make, you know, it's a lot yeah. better. Which is what it used um, to be. Yeah, yeah, correct. It always yeah. has been. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go back to that. It's a mistake. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, absolutely, because yeah. that creates the atmosphere. I'm sure that everyone, not just not just Blades yeah. fans who couldn't, couldn't get a ticket, but I'm sure that the Owls fans, in a way, you know, you, you probably want the sort of. A, a, a full sort of red and white end in a way, wouldn't you? I, I'm not, yeah, sort of whether the away team are for me. Yeah, correct. I mean, we go to away games, Preston first game of the season with technically 6,000. Yeah, that full yeah. stand is full. So why would yeah. you not want that at your place as well? That's Absolutely. my personal feeling of it. It's going to be a great day, very interesting day. And uh, we've, well, you know, you've, you've both nailed your colours to the mast and, <laughs> and produced convincing, com fairly convincing arguments, Absolutely, really. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Best team win. You know, as an adjudicator, I'm just going to sit here on my fence. As you know, usual. a bit lower down than as usual. usual. And just get splinters and say a draw. And <laughs> you're going to say a Blades win. So uh, it's going to be a, a great day. I really enjoyed the last out. Thank you very much indeed for coming in. Uh, Brendan Moore, you see him at the Crucible every year, World Snooker referee. And you see this guy in the theatre of the House of Commons regularly, Toby Perkins, MP, MP for Chesterfield. James, we see you here every week. Every Thank week, you yeah. very much indeed. We see Thank you me. there every week. Thank you for joining us. Uh, repeat at 11 o'clock. It's on my YouTube channel as well this evening. See you next week. Bye. Bye.